Why hello everyone. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the other videos on this channel. If you are returning, welcome back. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy the other videos on this channel or enjoy the other videos on this channel. In either case, don't forget to subscribe. I really like that more people are subscribing to this channel. It does bring me joy that I'm able to share my love of astronomy with you all. This video is a review of the ASI 294MC by ZWL. Before I go into the camera in and of itself, it's some things that I need to talk about first because as returning people know, I try to explain things in a non-technical way. But in order to do a review of the video camera, I will have to explain some technical things, but I'm gonna try to do it in a non-technical way so you understand what I'm talking about. When it comes to astrophotography, the, the key of it all is that, well, not the key, but there are different ways to do it. You can use smartphones, you can use DSLR cameras, you can use video cameras. I have chosen to use video cameras. And when you selecting a video camera, you have to determine, just like with a telescope, what do you what are you trying to look at? Are you look, trying to look at deep space objects? Are you trying to look at planets? Are you trying to look at the sun? Are you do you want to look at it in black and white? And, and are you trying to look at it in color? All of those factors, and even the type of telescope you have, ultimately determine what type of what type of camera you will you will get. Well, in this case, if you are determining, or you if you determine to look at a DS or a, a DSO, a deep space object, and if you decide to look at a planetary object, those are two separate. Those are two different types of cameras. This video is concerning planetary cameras. If you de decide that you want to look or purchase a black and white camera as opposed to a color camera, well, understand that a black and white camera is what it is. It is a black and white camera. It does not provide a color image. You will have to take the images in different wavelengths and then determine, or then put, put all those images together in processing to, que to create your color image. That takes a lot of time. Where as opposed to a color image, while the, while the quality of the image is not as great as using a black and white camera and then combining the different wavelengths you take them with that camera to one image. Most people won't be able to won't know the difference. And if you're and if you do not have the time to do that, then a color image, a color camera is a great option. As I mentioned previously, this video is about my color camera, the ASI 294MC. It is a good camera. I have been able to take excellent pictures of Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. I was also able to include pictures of Jupiter's moon, the Galilean moons, in these images. They've come out, the color images have been exquisite. The people that I have been, I've shown these images to love them. The software that is provided with this camera is easy to use. You are able to organize it based on what you're looking at. The thing that you have to think about when purchasing one of these cameras is the field of view. Now you might be wondering, what is the field of view? Well, the field of view basically is the area of the sky that you can see 
with your telescope and an eyepiece in most cases because you're not going to be looking through the telescope without an eyepiece. So once you attach your eyepiece to a telescope, the two things combined basically create a field of view. You change the eyepiece, you put in a new eyepiece, a different eyepiece, you create a different field of view. Using this camera is the same thing. It creates a field of view based on the telescope that you're using it for. Well, what I was able to do, or at least you can find websites that if you extract the information from the ZWO's website of the camera you want to purchase, and then you combine that with the information or the focal length of the telescope that you have or are thinking about getting, you could create, you can determine, you can find out what the field of view for the two objects combined would be. And that determines what you can see when using the camera and your telescope. And next, I'm going to talk about or use a spreadsheet that I've put together to help explain this in more detail. Okay, here's a bit, here's a spreadsheet that I've created. Now, before I purchase any video camera, I always check the field of view before I purchase it. And I do this because you don't want to buy a telescope or a camera and then find out that the field of view is so small that you can't get a good image of what you're trying to look at. The, I, this happened to me. I had a I have a Nexstar 8SC, and I was able to see the moon fine in the field of view with a 25 millimeter eyepiece. Well, I decided to. attach a DSLR camera to it. And then when I tried to take an image, the field of view was so small that I couldn't take full images of the moon. Now, it, it came out very good, but I couldn't take full images anymore. Not, and now, before I purchase a camera, I checked the field of view. You can do this. There are, there are websites online that provide the information. I am just like to do it on my own because I am an engineer by training, and therefore I like going through the calculations of it on my own. But basically, in order to determine the field of view, you need the sensor size, you need the pixel size of the camera, and you need the focal length of the telescope. You combine that information and therefore and web there are websites out here you can see the calculation the calculation that I'm using but you can, there are websites that, the, that provides this information and then you will get the calculation of the field of view now the field of view is in arc minutes basically we look at it like this when the sky or the area of the sky when the field of view is oftentimes when you look at it at the night sky, the distance the distance between let's say objects or locations is by degrees. Arc minutes is is less than a degree. Our seconds is less than an arc minute. So just think of it, so think of it, let's say it's a foot, it's a foot, you have, and then you go to inches. Think of it like that. Once you get the field of view, then you find out how large the object is in arc minutes or arc seconds. And then you can determine whether the camera that you're purchasing plus your telescope will be adequate for the object you're trying to look at. 
So you notice I have field of view for eyepieces, but I also have field or our times for some astronomy objects. So you can see Mars has a 20 arc seconds. That that's basically that basically means from one end of Mars to the other is 20 arc seconds. It is not that big. Jupiter is 40 arc seconds. But once you start going into deep space objects, you notice that it starts to become larger. Or you can see that the moon and sun because they are the same, they are the same arc, arc distance. They are the same arc distance from Earth in terms of their how far, how, how wide they are in diameter. Well, it's a 30 arc minute. So you can see that if I use my color camera with the moon, it, it will barely get in there. I'll have just a lot of some room to spare. But you also see that if I use it, if I use these cameras with, let's say, let's say with uh, the Lunt 80, I'm not going to use it, then it's much smaller in the field of view. So those are things you have to think about when trying to decide what type of camera you need to purchase. Like I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to go into this type of detail, but in order to do an adequate review of video cameras, I kind of have to go into this, this type of detail because you have the camera that you ultimately will purchase is based on the type of telescope that you have and the, the sensor size and the camera pixel size of your camera and what you ultimately want to look at. I can tell you from experience that my ASI 294MC plus the Nexstar 8SE have provided great images, great planetary images. I have been able to look at and create images based on all the different planets in the sky. And this camera is easy to use. You basically just attach it to your tele attach it to your telescope. You then down you can download the software they provide. It connects to your laptop. You can go out and then you can start take taking take images. It is pretty straightforward. And that is the review. I hope I have provided you with good information for this telescope or if I mean for this for this video camera this is a bit more technical than I like to explain on this channel but if you have any questions feel free to put your questions in the comment and I'll be sure to answer them thank you very much don't forget to subscribe and I will hear from you soon.